Neo-Bedouins. A new breed of worker, fueled by caffeine and using the tools of modern technology, is flourishing in the coffee houses of San Francisco. Roaming from cafe to cafe, and borrowing a name from the nomadic Arabs who wandered freely in the desert, they've come to be known as Bedouins. San Francisco's modern-day Bedouins are typically armed with laptops and cell phones, paying for their office space and internet access by buying coffee and muffins. San Francisco's Bedouins see themselves changing the nature of the workplace, if not the world at large. They see large companies like General Motors laying off workers, contributing to insecurity. And at the same time, they see the internet providing the tools to start companies on the cheap. In the Bedouin lifestyle, they are free to make their own rules. The San Francisco Coffee House is the new Palo Alto Garage, declares Kevin Burton, 30, who runs his internet startup, Tail Rank, without renting offices. It's where all the innovation is happening. The move toward mobile self-employment is also part of what author Daniel Pink identified when he wrote Free Agent Nation in 2001. A whole infrastructure has emerged to help people work in this way, Pink said. Part of it includes places like Kinko's, Office Depot, and Staples. It also includes places like Starbucks and independent coffee shops, where Wi-Fi, wireless internet access for laptops and other devices, is available. The infrastructure makes it possible for people to work where they want, when they want, how they want, said Pink. Pink calls it Karl Marx's revenge, where individuals own the means of production, and they can take the means of production and hop from coffee shop to coffee shop. There is nothing more free than being a web worker, Am um Malik says. There is no boss. You work for yourself. This is the new Wild West. The individual is more important. That's the American way. It's about doing things your own way. Web workers represent that. It's the future, my friend. Ritual Roasters in San Francisco's Mission District is in many ways the epicenter of the Bedouin movement. Ritual, on Valencia Street near 21st Street, is almost always packed with people working on laptops. Every Bedouin seems to have a ritual story. There's a time someone buzzed through the cafe on a Segway scooter. Ruby Red Labs, a hip web design shop in South Park, had its launch party there. Teams from established web companies such as Google Incorporated and Flickr, a photo sharing site that's now owned by Yahoo, meet there. You'd never know these guys were millionaires, said Ritual co-owner Jeremy Tooker. As for why they're there, Sean Kelly said, I'm visiting with my friends instead of being locked up in a building in the South Bay. Using a cafe to run a business is nothing particularly new. Venerable insurance firm Lloyd's of London was actually started in a coffee house, Kennedy points out. According to the Lloyd's of London website, Edward Lloyd opened a coffee house in 1688, encouraging a clientele of ship's captains, merchants, and ship owners earning him a reputation for trustworthy shipping news. This ensured that Lloyd's Coffee House became recognized as the place for obtaining marine insurance. Ernest Hemingway and F. Scott Fitzgerald wrote some of their best work in Parisian cafes. And in San Francisco, writers and poets of the Beat Generation, such as Jack Kerouac and Allen Ginsberg, wrote in the cafes of North Beach. Café Trieste was among the most popular North Beach hangouts. To have a cappuccino, you come to North Beach, to Café Trieste, says Giovanni Papagiani Ghiatti, the founder. Now, Café Trieste has joined the ranks of Wi-Fi cafes. It would figure that the one laptop in action on a recent afternoon belonged to an art dealer. A cappuccino for overhead isn't bad, said David Salo, 33. He struck out on his own three months ago and has yet to open a gallery. 60 to 70 percent of what I do can be done with the standard tools available to everyone. A phone, a computer, and a laptop connection. Hello and welcome to the vocabulary lesson for the Neo-Bedouins article. 
Let's get started. Let's start with the title, Neo-Bedouins. Neo means new. Neo means new. So it's new Bedouins, Neo-Bedouins. And usually we attach Neo to something else, Neo-Bedouins, Neo-Conservative, right? It means new something. Bedouin is the name of a group in Arabia, the Middle East, they are a tribe of people, a group of people. They uh, live in the desert. They move around the desert. That's where the name Bedouins comes from. Okay, now to the article. It says a new breed of worker is flourishing in San Francisco. Breed, in this case, breed means kind. A new kind of worker, a new type of worker, a new breed of worker is flourishing in the coffee houses of San Francisco. To flourish means to grow and succeed. Both ideas, really. To grow and succeed, or to grow successfully. That's to flourish, flourish, to flourish. So these new kinds of workers, they're flourishing in the coffee houses. That means they're growing. There's lots of them in the coffee houses. They are succeeding and doing well in the coffee houses. They're flourishing. And it says these workers roam from cafe to cafe. They're roaming from cafe to cafe. To roam means to move or to travel without a plan. So no plan. It's, you don't say, I will go to New York City, and you travel in a straight line. That's not roaming. That's travel. If you roam, you just go from one place to another place to another, but no plan, really. That's to roam. Also, to wander has the same meaning, to wander. Wa, not wonder, to wa, wander, or to roam. Same meaning, both words mean the same thing. To wander or to roam is to move around without a plan. Okay, and then we see that the name Bedouins was borrowed from the nomadic Arabs who wander in the desert. Nomadic. Nomadic means a, a people, a type of person, that moves around. They don't have only one home. Right? So these Arabs, they live with camels. They travel around the desert. They travel around Arabia. They don't live in one town or one city all year. They travel around. So we say they are nomadic. If you want to use the noun, the noun is nomad. They are nomads or they are nomadic using the adjective. Okay. And then we go down to the next paragraph, that these new Bedouins, these new uh, workers in San Francisco, they're armed with laptops and cell phones. To be armed with something just means that you have it or you carry it. They're carrying laptops and cell phones. They have laptops and cell phones. All right, moving down to the next paragraph. So San Francisco's Bedouins see themselves changing the nature changing the way of doing business, changing the nature of the workplace. Um, and it says they see companies like General Motors laying off workers. Okay, laying off means firing, right? It means you are forced to quit your job. So if GM lays off workers, it means GM fires the workers. It cuts the workers. Goodbye, you don't have a job now. Okay, and because a lot of big companies are laying off workers, firing workers, this is contributing to insecurity, to job insecurity. Insecurity is the opposite of security. Security means safety, stability, something that doesn't change quickly, something that is safe. So insecurity is the opposite. It means something that changes very fast something that's not safe. So now, especially in America, there is no job security. It's very insecure, right? There is job insecurity. You can lose your job very quickly. quickly. All right, and then uh, we see the phrase on the cheap in the same paragraph. On the cheap means cheaply. It means without much money. So in San Francisco, with the internet, you can start a company on the cheap. It means you can start a company cheaply. You can spend only a little money and start a company. And then uh, there's another phrase. It says, uh, 
San Francisco Coffee House is the new Palo Alto Garage. Palo Alto is a town in San Fran uh, near San Francisco. Palo Alto is in Silicon Valley, where there are many computer companies. All right, and then we see the word innovation in this article. Uh, the coffee houses in San Francisco are where all the innovation is happening. Innovation means creativity, new ideas, uh, changes, right? New creative changes, new ideas, creativity. That's innovation, innovation. So the innovation in San Francisco, the innovation in, in the computer industry, it's happening in San Francisco coffee houses. That's where all the new ideas are. That's where the creativity is. All right. And down a couple paragraphs, we see the word infrastructure. A whole new infrastructure has emerged to help people work this way. Infrastructure are the uh, public services and the public uh, goods in a country. For example, roads. Roads are infrastructure, right? Everybody can use the roads. They're public. And they help everybody. All businesses, all people can use the roads, and that helps them. Uh, phones, phone systems, that's infrastructure, right? Everybody can use the phone system. It's public. Uh, in San Francisco, we have the computer internet system. We have uh, Wi-Fi, free internet, free wireless internet is Wi-Fi. That's infrastructure. Everybody can use it. It's public. All right. So this is infrastructure, and it has emerged. Emerged means to come out and appear. So this infrastructure has appeared, right? It has come up and appeared suddenly in the last uh, maybe 10, 20 years. We have uh, all these new computers, all these uh, the, the new high-speed Internet, uh, the, all these things. They're infrastructure. Okay, and he gives examples, wireless internet, laptops, cell phones. These are infrastructure that help people work independently and help people start their own businesses without much money. Okay, and then at the bottom he says, he, Pink calls it Karl Marx's Revenge. Karl Marx was the socialist writer. He wrote um, the Communist Manifesto, so he's a socialist, communist writer. And revenge, revenge means uh, if somebody hurts you and then you attack them, that's revenge, right? You hurt someone who already hurt you. That's revenge. So this is Karl Marx's revenge. He's getting revenge on capitalism. He says where individuals can own the means of production, the means of production. Production means making something. In this, in this case, we mean making a business, making money, making a website. The means of production means the tools, the uh, equipment that you need to make something. Uh, in this article, it's laptop, computer, cell phone, internet access. So now individuals can own these things. They can own everything they need for a business. All right. In the past... You, you had to be very rich to do this, but now you don't need to be rich. All right, and then on to the next page, second page. Um, we see the phrase web worker, web worker. There's nothing more free than being a web worker. Web, of course, means internet, right? Some people call it the World Wide Web or the web. The web is, uh, means internet. So an, a web worker is an internet worker, someone whose business is the internet. And he says, it's the new Wild West. The Wild West, that means it's an area that is very free, very free. This comes from American history, where the West used to be very free. So any situation where there's a lot of freedom, we call it the Wild West. And it says, uh, San Francisco's coffee houses are the epicenter of the Bedouin movement. The epicenter means the center, the exact center, the middle. It's where something starts. So in America, the epicenter of the internet, the epicenter of computer technology is San Francisco and Silicon Valley. They're, they're next to each other. So the Bay Area, Northern California, is the epicenter 
of the computer industry. It's the center. It's where it starts. It's where it's strongest. All right. And here, movement means a social trend, something that's happening and changing in society. That's a movement. All right, keep going. We see the word buzzed. Uh, they talk about a story in the coffee house where a Segway scooter buzzed through the cafe. To buzz through something means to move through it very quickly. Maybe you run through it. Maybe you drive next to something very fast. We call that buzzing, to buzz something. All right. We see the word hip. Hip means cool. A hip web company. A hip internet site. That means it's a cool internet site. So if someone is hip, they are cool, right? They're very good. All right. A couple paragraphs down, we see the word venerable, that the venerable insurance firm, Lloyd's of London, was also started in a coffee house. Venerable means very, very old. So venerable, venerable. Venerable means very, very old. Not just old, very old, venerable. So a venerable insurance firm, a venerable firm, means a very old company. Firm means company, okay? So Lloyd's of London, that's the name, Lloyd's of London, they are a venerable firm. They are a very, very old company. All right, and then uh, going down a little bit farther, we see the word Parisian, Parisian. Ernest Hemingway did some of his best work in Parisian cafes. Parisian means from Paris, from Paris, France. So a Parisian cafe is a cafe in Paris. All right. We see the, word, the phrase North Beach. We've, had, we've heard that in other articles. North Beach is a neighborhood in San Francisco. And then we see the word hangout, a hangout. Now, hangout can be a verb, to hang out, to hang out with your friends. If you hang out, using it as a verb, it means to meet together meet together and maybe talk together. To meet is what it means, to hang out with, to meet with. But if we use it as a noun here in this article, it's a noun. A hangout is a place where people meet. For example, coffee shops. The coffee shops are hangouts. Many people meet in coffee shops. So we can say, this coffee shop is a popular hangout. It's a popular place for people to meet. So they talk about Cafe Trieste. Uh, it's one of the most popular hangouts in San Francisco. Cafe Trieste has a history. It's a famous coffee shop in San Francisco. Many famous writers uh, have gone there and have worked there, writing their books in the coffee shop. So Cafe Trieste is a famous hangout in San Francisco. And now they have free internet free wireless internet, which we call Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi means wireless internet. Okay, and then we see the phrase, it would figure. It would figure that the one laptop being used belonged to an art dealer. It would figure means it makes sense or it's not surprising. Right? Say, ah, it would figure. What, why? What does this mean? It, well, Cafe Trieste has a reputation. It's famous for artists, artists and writers. So if you say it would figure the person in the coffee shop is an art dealer. So it means it makes sense. We're not surprised. Cafe Trieste is famous for artists. So somebody in the coffee shop using a computer, ah, they do work with art. They're an art dealer, an art seller. So it, it fits their image. It fits their reputation. It would figure. It makes sense. Okay, and the guy, the guard dealer, he says, a cappuccino for overhead isn't bad. Overhead is a business word. Overhead means the costs that you must pay to run your business, to operate your business. For example, rent. Right? If you have an office, you must pay rent. That money, that rent money, is called overhead. Um, insurance. That's another kind of overhead. It's money you pay every month to keep your business going, to run your business. So he's saying, this guy, 
he doesn't need an office. He goes to the coffee shop. So he only buys a cappuccino. That's his overhead. That's his rent cost, one cup of coffee. So he says, that's not bad. It's very cheap. And then finally, our last phrase, he struck out on his own three months ago. To strike out on, you need all three words. If you say strike out, it has a different meaning from baseball. So you need to say to strike out on, to strike out on your own, to strike out on your own, to strike out on your own. The whole phrase, it means to do something by yourself or to start something by yourself, to start something alone. Nobody helps you. So this guy, he struck out on his own three months ago. He started his company alone three months ago. That's what it means. To strike out on your own means to do something, to start something by yourself. Okay, that is all of the vocabulary for this article. Move on to the mini story. Bye-bye. Okay, welcome to the mini story for the Neo-Bedouins lesson. Let's get started. First, the story. There's a hip guy named Andy. Andy is nomadic. He can never stay in one place. He loves to roam from place to place, country to country. But every summer, he always stays in San Francisco. When he's in the city, his favorite hangout is the venerable Café Trieste. The café used to be the place where San Francisco's famous writers hung out. It was the epicenter of the San Francisco arts movement. One day, Andy emerges from the café and he crosses paths with an old friend named Leo. His friend says, I'm leaving San Francisco. I'm striking out on my own to see the world. Andy asks him, where are you going first? Leo says, I'm going to Iraq. It's very beautiful in the summer. Two weeks later, Andy reads the newspaper and sees a story. The story says that Leo has been killed in Iraq. It figures, says Andy, Iraq is a very dangerous and insecure place. What an idiot. Okay, let's go back up to the beginning, this time with questions. Use your pause button to answer the questions, or shout them out quickly, or just listen and relax. It's up to you. Let's get started. There's a hip guy named Andy. Is Andy cool? Yeah, that's right, of course. He's cool. He's hip. He's a hip guy. He's a cool guy. He wears sunglasses. He has really nice clothes. He looks good. He's a hip guy. He's a very cool guy. Is Leo a hip guy? No, not Leo. Leo's not a hip, cool guy. Andy is a hip guy. Andy is a cool guy. So is Andy hip? Or is he a dork, a nerd? Well, Andy is a hip guy. Andy is hip. He's not a dork. That's the opposite of cool. A dork or a nerd, that means not cool. But Andy is cool, so he's a hip guy. Andy is a very hip guy. So, who is a hip guy? Well, Andy is a hip guy, right? He's a cool guy. Andy is a very hip guy. Andy's a hip guy. He's also nomadic. Does Andy like to travel around a lot? Yes, that's exactly right. He's nomadic. He likes to move a lot. He's always moving from one place to another. He never stays in one place a long time. He's nomadic. Andy is very nomadic. He likes to move a lot. Is Leo nomadic? His friend Leo. Well, yeah, maybe. I think Leo probably is also nomadic, right? Leo is traveling around a lot. He goes to Iraq. So Leo is also nomadic. He also likes to move a lot. He likes to move around. Are Bedouins 
Bedouins, nomadic. Yeah, that's right. Remember in the vocabulary lesson, Bedouins, there are people in Arabia, they are nomadic. They move around a lot. They don't stay in one place. They're always moving. They are nomadic. So Andy is a hip guy. He's a cool guy. And he's nomadic. He likes to move a lot. He can never stay in one place. He loves to roam from country to country and place to place. Does he like to travel? Does he plan his travel a lot? Plan it carefully? No, no, no. He does not plan his traveling carefully. He likes to roam. It means he likes to travel without a plan. One day he thinks, ah, I want to go to Mexico. So he goes to Mexico. And the next month he thinks, I want to go to Europe. So he goes to Europe. He's roaming. There's no plan, right? He doesn't have a definite plan. He's roaming. He likes to roam from country to country. Who loves to roam from country to country? Well, Andy likes to roam from country to country. Why does he like to roam? Well, he likes to roam because he's nomadic. He's a nomadic person. So he likes to roam, he likes to travel without a plan from place to place. He's always roaming the world, traveling the world. But every summer, he always stays in San Francisco. So the rest of the year, he's traveling, traveling, traveling. But in the summer, he always stays in San Francisco. When he's in the city, his favorite hangout is Café Trieste. Is Café Trieste his favorite place to meet people? Yes, that's right. Café Trieste is his favorite place to meet people. Is Café Trieste his favorite place to stay and relax? Yes, that's right. It's his favorite hangout. It's his favorite hangout, his favorite place to stay and relax and rest and meet people. It's his favorite hangout. Where is his favorite hangout? His favorite hangout is Café Trieste in San Francisco. Is his favorite hangout very old, an old place? That's right, yes, it's a venerable place. He likes to hang out. His favorite hangout is the venerable Café Trieste. Is Café Trieste very, very, very old? Yes, that's right. It's venerable. It's extremely old, very old. It's the venerable Café Trieste. It's the very, very old Café Trieste. Is San Francisco a venerable city? Well, uh, yes and no. For America, it is a venerable city. It's an old city in America. But in the world, maybe people think, oh, it's not so old, right? It's not very old. Cities in Europe, cities in Asia are much older. But in America, we think, oh, San Francisco is a venerable city, a very old city. And Café Trieste is a venerable café. It's an old café. And the café used to be the center where San Francisco's famous, famous writers hung out. Did famous writers meet at Café Trieste? Yes, they did. They hung out at Café Trieste. This is the past tense, using it as a verb. They hung out at Café Trieste. They met at Café Trieste. They stayed and relaxed at Café Trieste. They hung out at Café Trieste in the past. In the past, San Francisco's famous writers hung out at Café Trieste. Café Trieste was the epicenter of the San Francisco arts movement. Did the San Francisco Arts Movement start near Café Trieste? Yes, it did. That's right. That was the center. That was the most important place for the arts movement, the arts group. Was it the epicenter of a earthquake, an earthquake? No, no, it wasn't the center of an earthquake, right? <laughs> Big earthquake, buildings falling down. No, no, no. The earthquake did not start there. What was it the epicenter of? Well, Café Trieste was the epicenter of the San Francisco arts movement. It was the center. It's where it started. 
It's where most of the artists would meet. Café Trias was the epicenter, the center, the starting point of the arts movement. Okay, so one day, Andy emerges from the café. Does he go into the café? No, no, he doesn't go in. He comes out of the café. He emerges from the café. He comes out of the café. He appears from the café, right? So he emerges from the café. He comes out of the café. Where does Andy emerge from? Well, he emerges from the café. He emerges from Café Trieste. He comes out of Café Trieste. After he emerges from Café Trieste, what happens? Well, after he emerges, after he comes out, he crosses paths with an old friend named Leo. He meets an old friend named Leo. Leo says, I'm leaving San Francisco. I'm striking out on my own to see the world. Is Leo traveling alone? Exactly, yes. He's striking out on his own. He's traveling alone. He's traveling by himself. Is Leo striking out on his own to begin a business? No, 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 no. He's striking out on his own to travel. He's starting to travel alone. He's not starting a business alone. He's striking out on his own to travel, to see the world. Is Leo striking out on his own, or is he traveling with other people? Okay, it's an easy question, right? He's striking out on his own. He's starting to travel by himself alone. Okay, good. What does Andy say? Well, Andy asked him, where are you going first? And Leo says, I'm going to Iraq. It's very beautiful in the summer. Two weeks later, Andy is in his uh, home and he reads the newspaper and he sees a story. The story says that Leo was killed in Iraq. Andy says, it figures. Is Andy surprised that Leo is dead? No, no, he's not surprised. He says, it figures, right? He expected this. He thinks, ah, I'm not surprised. He says, it figures, it figures, I'm not surprised. It makes sense. Leo is dead. Why does it figure? Why does it make sense? Well, because Iraq is very dangerous, right? So it's not surprising he got killed in Iraq. It figures. It's not surprising. So Andy says, it figures. And then he says, Iraq is a very dangerous and insecure place. What an idiot. Is Iraq a safe place, a secure place? No, no, it's the opposite. It's a very insecure place. It's not safe. It's insecure. Uh, Does Iraq change a lot? Do a lot of things change very quickly in Iraq? Yeah, that's right. It's an insecure place, right? It's not stable. It's always changing. Different things, different bad things happening all the time. It's insecure. It's not safe. Is America an insecure place? Well, uh, maybe. (laughs) But in general, no. It's not insecure. America is generally safe. It's generally stable. It's generally secure. So, in general, America is not insecure. Is uh, Colombia insecure? Well, maybe. I've never been to Colombia, but in the news, it seems Colombia is not safe. So it, there's a lot of uh, drugs and a lot of violence, maybe, in Colombia. So maybe Colombia is not secure. Maybe Colombia is insecure. Parts of Colombia are insecure. Iraq is very insecure. And so he says, what an idiot. Why did he travel to Iraq? Okay, very good. Let's go back up again. This time, I will pause after the key phrases. Please repeat them. You can also use your pause button if necessary. Here we go. There's a hip guy named Andy. 
Good. There's a hip guy named Andy. Andy is nomadic. Andy is nomadic. Okay. He can never stay in one place. He loves to roam from country to country. He loves to roam from country to country. Good. But every summer, he stays in San Francisco. When he's in the city, his favorite hangout is the venerable Café Trieste. His favorite hangout is the venerable Café Trieste. The café used to be the place where San Francisco's famous writers hung out. The café used to be the place where San Francisco's famous writers hung out. It was the epicenter of the San Francisco arts movement. It was the epicenter of the San Francisco arts movement. Okay, good. One day, Andy emerges from the cafe. One day, Andy emerges from the cafe. Okay. He crosses paths with Leo. He crosses paths with Leo. Leo says, I'm leaving San Francisco. I'm striking out on my own to see the world. I'm striking out on my own to see the world. Andy asks him, where are you going first? Leo says, I'm going to Iraq. It's very beautiful in the summer. Two weeks later, Andy reads the newspaper and sees a story. The story says that Leo was killed in Iraq. It figures, says Andy. It figures, says Andy. Iraq is a very dangerous and insecure place. Iraq is a very dangerous and insecure place. What an idiot! All right, that's all. Please uh, play this many times. Now pause and try to tell all of the story yourself. See you next time. Bye-bye. Okay, welcome to the Point of View mini-stories for Neo-Bedouins. So same story as the mini-story, but we're going to change the time frame. We're going to start with in 1968, the year I was born. Okay, here we go. In 1968, there was a hip guy named Andy. Andy was nomadic. He could never stay in one place. He loved to roam from country to country, place to place. But every summer, he always stayed in San Francisco. When he was in the city, his favorite hangout was the venerable Café Trieste. The café used to be the place where San Francisco's famous writers hung out. It was the epicenter of the San Francisco arts movement. One day, Andy emerged from the café and he crossed paths with an old friend named Leo. His friend said, I'm leaving San Francisco. I'm striking out on my own to see the world. Andy asked him, where are you going first? Leo said, I'm going to Vietnam. It's a very beautiful place in the summer. Two weeks later, Andy was reading the newspaper and saw a story. The story said that Leo had been killed in Vietnam. It figures, said Andy. Vietnam is a very dangerous and insecure place. What an idiot. All righty. So that was... In 1968, right? In the past, in the past. Next, let's begin with since 2000. Since the year 2000. Here we go. There's a guy named Andy. Since 2000, 
Andy has been nomadic. He hasn't been able to stay in one place. He has loved to roam from country to country and place to place. But every summer, he has always stayed in San Francisco. When he's been in the city, his favorite hangout has always been the venerable Café Trieste. The café used to be the place where San Francisco's famous writers hung out. It was the epicenter of the San Francisco arts movement. One day, Andy emerged from the café and crossed paths with an old friend named Leo. His friend said, I'm leaving San Francisco. I'm striking out on my own to see the world. Andy asked him, where are you going first? Leo said, I'm going to Iraq. It's very beautiful in the summer. Two weeks later, Andy read the newspaper and saw a story. The story said that Leo had been killed in Iraq. It figures, said Andy. Iraq is a very dangerous place and it's insecure. What an idiot. Okay, great. Next one, let's go to the future. We'll say next year. Okay, here's my little story idea for next year. There'll be a guy named Andy. He'll be a hip guy. Andy'll be nomadic. He'll never be able to stay in one place. He'll love to roam from country to country and place to place. But every summer, he'll always stay in San Francisco. Uh, when he's in the city, his favorite hangout will be the venerable Café Trieste. Now, the café used to be the place where San Francisco's famous writers hung out. It was the epicenter of the San Francisco arts movement. Now, in the future, one day, Andy will emerge from the café and he'll cross paths with an old friend named Leo. His friend will say, I'm leaving San Francisco. I'm striking out on my own to see the world. Andy will ask him, where are you going first? And Leo will say, I'm going to Iraq. It's very beautiful in the summer. Two weeks later, Andy will be reading the newspaper and he'll see a story. The story will say that Leo was killed in Iraq. It figures, Andy will say, Iraq is a very dangerous and insecure place. What an idiot. Okay, that is all of the point of view mini stories for this lesson, Neo-Bedouins. Now, when you listen to point of view lessons, just relax, okay? Don't worry about getting the grammar perfect. It doesn't need to be perfect, okay? It takes time. Listen again and again and again to the point of view mini stories. Listen to the first mini story lesson. Listen to all the lessons, okay? Relax, you will start to improve your grammar automatically if you listen carefully. It's okay if you make a mistake. It's okay if you pause and try to tell the story, but you can't remember the grammar exactly. Don't worry, don't worry, it's okay. Just keep listening, 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 listening very carefully. Notice the different sounds. Notice how the verbs change. Notice how the vocabulary changes sometimes. Just notice and listen carefully. Then, if you can, pause after each version. Try to tell the story using the phrase, in 1968. Then tell it again, since 2000. Then tell it again, next year. Don't worry if you make some mistakes. It's okay. Okay? Relax. All right. See you next time. Bye-bye. Okay, welcome to the commentary for the Neo-Bedouins article. This is an exciting article. I really like this article. I saw it on the front page of the San Francisco newspaper, which is called the San Francisco Chronicle, uh, this week, a couple days ago. And when I saw it and read the article, I thought, wow, this is me. This is what I'm doing with Effortless English, right? I, uh, I don't have an office for Effortless English. In fact, I go to coffee shops here in San Francisco often, and I think about the website, I write down my ideas. Sometimes I bring my laptop, although usually I uh, do this in my apartment, actually recording, because I need a, a 
more private space to record lessons. But anyway, I write the lessons in the coffee shops uh, quite often. And in the coffee shops, I always see many, many people with laptop computers. And often I will hear people having little meetings about their internet company and discussing different issues, designing their websites. Um, it's very exciting, actually, to be here in San Francisco at this time, especially being involved with uh, an internet business, uh, with uh, internet teaching, uh, because really, in America, uh, this is the epicenter of computer technology, of IT, internet, um, internet technology. Um, it's all right here. It's happening here, most of all. Uh, Silicon Valley, you've probably heard of Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley is the place uh, in California where there are many, many computer companies. Apple Computer, Hewlett Packard, uh, a lot of Japanese computer companies have offices there. Uh, but Silicon Valley is near San Francisco. It's uh, a short drive from here. In fact, it's between San Francisco and San Jose. Uh, from San Francisco, you drive to Silicon Valley or take a train, maybe, I don't know, 30 minutes, something like that, 30, 40 minutes, not far. So San Francisco and Silicon Valley, really one area. And uh, this is where all the innovation is happening in the United States uh, with computer industry and especially the internet. So it's quite exciting to be here, involved in that. It's, it's, it's kind of a really great energy, a lot of new and interesting things happening, lots of creative, innovative people, uh, a lot of uh, flourishing, growing, succeeding internet companies. I mean, Google is based here, for example. Um, Yahoo as well. So anyway, it's, it's fantastic. It's a great place to be if you are involved in the computer industry or if you're involved in uh, uh, the internet in any way. Um, another thing about this article that uh, I liked a lot, that I said, wow, that's me, is the part about the nomadic tribes, being nomadic, traveling around. Uh, that's another reason I, I have chosen to teach with the internet. Now, I believe that teaching with the internet and also learning with the internet is just amazing. It's so flexible. You can be nomadic and still have a business. You can be nomadic and still have all your English learning materials, right? With your computer, the internet, and your little iPod. That's all you need. You can go anywhere. You can travel to a beach in Thailand, but still study English, right? You've got your iPod. That's all you need. There's internet connections everywhere. So it's very simple, and it's so much more flexible than in the past. It's the same for me with Effortless English. I can do Effortless English from anywhere. So if I want to travel to Mexico, I can go to Mexico and continue to work on the website. I can travel to Thailand. I can live in Thailand and still do the website, still build Effortless English. I can move around. I can be nomadic. And I love that because I love traveling. Um, the reason I love teaching English is that it connects me to people all over the world. I, I, I just love going to different places in the world. I love meeting new people. I love uh, seeing and learning about new cultures. Uh, it's just fantastic. It's, it's really, so it's really exciting to me. I have a lot of emotion about this topic because this is why I'm doing it. This is why I'm doing effortless English. Uh, I'm, it's just really exciting. It's an exciting time. Another key point in the article is about this idea of self-employment, right? It's not just nomadic employment. It's self-employment. It means you are your own boss. And uh, this idea that the job market is insecure, right? There's a lot of insecurity now in my father's generation. Um, he worked for IBM over 20 years, one company. You know, that was uh, normal for him. But here now in my generation and younger in the United States, that is not normal. Almost nobody works for the same company for 20 years. It doesn't happen. Uh, they get fired. They get laid off, right? Because older workers are expensive 
and the company wants to save money, so they cut their older workers. Uh, there's just no job security in America anymore. It's, it's, it's a reality. Um, now, for me, I don't mind. Uh, my dad probably doesn't like that. Maybe older people think that's a bad thing. But there's a good side to it. And the good side is in this article. And that is, we can be more independent. Now we have the ability, with computer technology, with the internet, uh, with a lot of things, to be our own boss. We can start our own companies. And we can be freelancers, meaning we do some work and we sell it to other people, whoever will buy it. Writers and photographers do this a lot. But now we can do this with uh, many, many different things. And that's exciting. Um, why is it exciting to me? Well, to be honest, I don't like bosses. In fact, I hate working for other people. I hate having a boss tell me how to teach or what book I must use or what method I must follow. Um, yeah, it's not good for me <laughs> because uh, I don't listen to them. And that gets me in trouble. It got me in trouble in Thailand, in fact. Um, I have a strong idea about uh, how, how I should teach and what I'm good at and what is my best teaching style and how to make uh, English learning more fun, more interesting, and more effective. And unfortunately, or maybe, maybe fortunately, I don't know, but anyway, that, those ideas go against traditional English teaching, right? I don't like textbooks, for example. I refuse to use them. I won't use them. Uh, at least I certainly won't spend all my time in class teaching from a textbook. I don't like grammar analysis because it does not work. It just does not work for most people. It fails most students. So I don't like doing things I know are failures. I don't like doing things I know will not help the students. So I disobey. I don't follow my boss's advice. I don't listen to my bosses. And, you know, they don't like that sometimes. <laughs> so after I had a lot of trouble in Thailand because I was doing my own method, not using their methods, um, Somebody told me, actually somebody on Tom Peter's blog told me, AJ, you have to start your own business. Your personality and your ideas, they're too different. You will never be happy working for another person. You must be an entrepreneur. You must start your own business. And that's when I started really thinking about, you know, I need to, to do this myself. I want to teach the way I feel is best the way I'm the best at teaching, the best style for me, and what I think is best for students. That is always what I want to follow, not some rule from a company, not some principal or boss's rule. I want to do what I think is best. So the only way to do that, really, is to start your own business. And it doesn't matter, even if you're not a teacher, if you're a, a doctor, the way to, and you want to treat your patients the best you can treat them. And you have your very strong ideas how to do that. Well, you have to have your own business, your own medical practice, your own medical business to do that. If you work in a hospital, you probably have bosses telling you what to do. If you're a business person, maybe you have strong ideas about what is right and what is wrong. If you have your own business, you can follow those. But if you work for someone else, well, they might want you to do things you think are not good or not, not ethical, right? not moral. Maybe they, you think, oh, I don't, don't want to lie to my customers. I have to tell them the truth. And if, there's, if I make a mistake or something is bad, I have to tell them the truth. But maybe your company says, no, 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 you have to lie to them. Right? Some, peop some people, in fact, a lot of people don't like that. Well, the only way to follow your own principles is to have your own business. And so anyway, that's the, the long answer to why I love self-employment, why I think it's great. Unfortunately, right now I am a part-time Bedouin. Um, in fact, a lot of these Bedouins you see in the coffee shops, a lot of them are part-time. With a startup, with a new company, you know, you have no money, right? You have very little money. Um, so usually you have to work another job at the same time while you build your company. So I'm doing that right now. I'm building Effortless English slowly, but I don't have enough money to do it all the time. I can't do Effortless English full-time right now. Um, I did not borrow money to start this website. 
I do not want to borrow money. Uh, I don't want a bank uh, controlling or owning the website. <laughs> so I want it to be mine so I can do it my way. So right now I teach, uh, I'm teaching classes here in San Francisco to students in San Francisco. Uh, and I'm doing the website part-time. I'm a part-time Bedouin. In the future, I hope to do it full-time. Um, and that's what a lot of these internet companies are doing. And you see these people in the coffee shops. Many of them are part-time. Some of them are full-time. Maybe they're making enough to survive. And they're trying to build their, build their business. Uh, and they're trying to do it in a very cheap way without borrowing money from a bank. Or at least borrowing a very small amount. And that's really exciting if you think about it. Because anybody, any effortless English member could start their own business. You can start your own business on the internet. Get a laptop computer for, I don't know, Apple's are about $1,000. I think uh, Windows would be cheaper. So you get, a, you get a laptop computer. I mean, that's expensive, but compared to the past, it's very, very cheap. In the past, you had to borrow $10,000, $100,000. Well, now $1,000, you can use a credit card if necessary, or you can work and save your money. You can get a laptop computer. Um, you can get internet connections uh, for free in some coffee shops. I know in America you can. In Thailand, yes, I could do that sometimes. Uh, in Bangkok, I found free uh, internet access. Or you can find it very cheap somewhere. Um, and, you know, and you get a cell phone for your phone. That's all. You have your business. You're ready to go. Uh, now you have to, you know, of course, find a website. You can usually you can start a Yahoo store or Google has uh, um, internet business programs to help you create your website. Uh, and they're also quite cheap. So th this is an amazing opportunity uh, to start your own business uh, if you want to. So I encourage you, if you have thought about in the past, maybe I should start my own business. Well, do it. Do it. Try it. You can do it part-time. Keep your normal job. Start your website. It's okay if you don't know what's, what to do. When I started Effortless English, I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything about business. I still don't, <laughs> really. Um, I just tried things. I, I started it. I tried something. Sometimes it worked, it was successful, sometimes it failed. If it failed, I got rid of it, I threw it away, and then I tried something else. That's how I am developing Effortless English. I just try things and try things and try things. Some things are good and I keep them. Some things are bad, I throw them away. That's all you do. That's it. That's the key to starting your own business. Just uh, start it cheap, try things, keep the stuff that works, get rid of stuff that fails. Keep doing that again and again every year, every month, every week, every day, and you will build a business. So good luck. I hope that more people will do this because it's very exciting. And it feels so good to have your, something yourself. It's yours. You are building it. You are responsible. That, that's, bit, that's huge. It's really important, and it's a, it's a good feeling. I love Effortless English. I don't care if I make a lot of money or not. But I really love being responsible for it. I love that it's, it's mine, that I'm building it together with learners. No other boss, nobody telling us what to do. It's fantastic. It really is great. All right, so I encourage you, become a neo-nomad. Become a neo-Bedouin yourself. All right, see you next time. Bye-bye.